Hi everybody, welcome to the week three, oh sorry, week two, 11, 12 biology. I'm pre-recording this on the Friday night uh, because I'm going away for holidays for a week. Yay. Today, the last week we looked at cells, viruses, and bacteria. Today we're going to look, uh, progress beyond that and look at the cell, the, the organizational structure of an organism. So I picked humans because, well, it's um, my area of expertise, human, not insect or other animal. So it's easier for me to talk about. So again, I'm gonna use the whiteboard fairly heftily. You're following along with the slides, like I hope you are. We're on slide two. So you should have learned in Right. You should have learned, or well, they should have taught you the hierarchy of living systems. So, at the bottom we have specialized cells. And this is what I teach uh, in the 7 to 10 seminar. Specialized cells make up tissues. Tissues make up organs. Organs make up systems. Also known as organ systems, but I mean, I don't think we really need to, to say that. We just need to say systems. Organism. And there's some above that up to the biome. But we're only going to concentrate on to here. To specialized cells such as nerve cells, muscle cells, skin cells, make up tissues, make up the organs. Those organs make up the systems, and the systems make up the organs. So we're going to learn about some specialized cells, some tissues, some organs. Uh, I think about six of the systems, the most uh, common ones, and then how everything ties together into the organism. I'm also going to touch on some pathophysiology, which is once we understand how it all works, we'll learn about what happens when it doesn't work. So slide three. <clears throat> and the, the other big difference between seven to 10 and 11 to 12 is uh, we've got specialized cells at the bottom, but we can also go behind there with stem cells. So, specialized cells, they don't just appear out of nowhere. We used to think they did. Obviously, we now know that that is not the case. All of these specialized cells start as a stem cell. A new cell is produced and a copy of the stem cell is made. So it may make a nerve cell and it will make another copy of itself. So there's some key terms to understand. Differentiation, specialization and differentiation. Specialization and differentiation, that's uh, the, the concept of going from a stem cell to a specialized cell. So we share it back in this slightly so it's not quite so zoomed in. 
you can find my I literally just recorded one and now it's moved to spots again. So looking at slide five, we have the cells, those cells make up the tissues. And those make up the organs, make up the organ system, make up the organs. So stem cells, we have embryonic. And I will do uh, one week just on stem cells. Embryonic and adult stem cells. So embryonic and adult embryonic stem cells occur during the early development of the embryo. And this is where all of the cells that make up the three germ layers of the embryo produce all of the cells for the body. Again, not going to go too deep into that because it is, we will do a specialist week just on stem cells. Adult stem cells are present in bone marrow. So, hematopoietic stem cells, which make all of the, uh, the white and red blood cells in our body. Uh, we have in the spinal cord and in the skin. So these make blood cells help to repair the spinal cord. They're not very uh, effective at repairing the spinal cord, but they do. Skin, the top layer on your skin is very active. If you scratch it, it turns white because of all the dead cells. If those if this didn't happen, if we weren't constantly creating new skin cells, we would uh, suffer from skin cancer very, very quickly. So, quick overview of stem cells and a little bit of genetics here. So, all of the cells come from stem cells and every cell in the body has exactly the same genome. So the DNA in every cell is exactly the same. Now, something to ponder over the next couple of weeks is how do we get a different cell from exactly the same genes? Think of the DNA or the genome like the hard drive. It's got all the information, but there's, on its own, there's nothing to tell it what to do. If I took out the hard drive from my computer, it has the, the, uh, the instructions and all the data, but it can't do anything. And that's like the DNA. So over the next few weeks, we'll explore the topic of how do stem cells make new different kinds of specialized cells from the same genes. I'm gonna give you two words, expression, as so expression of genes and the environment the cells are in plays the biggest role. But we'll explore that further and when we get onto the stem cell week. So again, you guys should all know cells are the smallest living unit. All cells start as stem cells and differentiate into specialized cells. Just share it so you can see what I'm talking about. So specialized cells make up the tissues, tissue make up the organs, organs make up the systems, systems make up organism. And that is why I will keep harping on. So cell differentiation. This is, is the process in which stem cells change into specialized cells. So we know we have specialized cells, but cells don't start in the body as specialized cells. They start as unspecialized.
stem cells. I'm going to do a little flow chart, I think. A flow chart, save you reading the uh, so stem cells. Undifferentiated. This differentiation is controlled by gene expression. Someone's moved my other phone. Gene expression determines cell type. Gene expression determines the cell type. And this gene expression, so there's, I say a thousand, again, random number, thousand genes all up. Genes are, um, create proteins which tells the cell what to become. So a thousand genes, it might turn on 400 of them. Which then tells the cell to become a liver cell. And the way that we can make so many different cell types is that different combinations of genes are switched on and off. Dependent on what the cell type is. So hemoglobin or red blood cells or erythrocytes. RBC for red blood cell expresses the gene for hemoglobin. which allows it to carry oxygen. Is that gene expressed in liver cells? No. And the liver, the genes that are expressed in liver cells for detoxifying things are not expressed in red blood cells. So that's what I mean by differential expression of genes tells the cells what to become. So if you want to have a look, you go to slide nine, you can see the embryonic germ layers. So we have the mesoderm. So mesoderm, endoderm, ectoderm,
And then from here, these are the three layers of the germ cell. Again, I'm not, I'll go through this in more detail, the stem cell presentation. But certain cells are produced by this layer, by this layer, and by this layer. Again, I'm not going to go through them. So specialized cells make up the body. Specialized cells are derived from stem cells, as we know, depending on what they are, tells you uh, where they're produced from. I'm not going to go into detail now because it's quite a bit to get through to that. Um, so specialized cells perform specific functions in the body and different genes are expressed in stem cells to produce the different cell types. So smooth muscle cells are an example of a specialized cell uh, in the stomach. And in the heart. So yeah, smooth muscle cells are found in the stomach and the heart. They are muscle cells that contract involuntary. Sorry, yeah, they're involuntary contractions. Normal muscle cell, I have to voluntarily contract it. Smooth muscle cells are not voluntary. If they were, we had to manually pump our heart, then we probably don't. So nerve cells make up the nervous system and they carry electrical signals around the body, among other things. So tissues made up of one or more specialized cells and they perform specific functions within an organ. So the heart has many tissues that make up and each of them performs a specific function. And works together to make the heart beat at the right time. When one of those things fails, the whole heart fails. So, classic one is blood. Blood is a tissue. It's made up of red blood cells, white blood cells, plasma and platelets. Red blood cells being the cells that carry oxygen to the tissues and CO2 away from the tissues to the lungs to be breathed out or pardon me, exhaled. Uh, white blood cells are your immune cells and platelets are clotting factors. So when you cut yourself, that's what makes the blood clot. The cells don't have to be identical to it be a tissue, but they work together to achieve a specific function, and this makes them a tissue. So with the four main types of tissues, nerve, connective, epithelial, and muscle. Epithelial are usually single cell linings of the stomach, of the kidneys, and they're involved in the, usually in the absorption of something. So that's the lining of the stomach, got the kidneys there, and you've got in the epidermis, which is the skin. Nerve tissue is involved in, funnily enough, the nerves. Connective tissue, bone, blood, uh, it sounds weird, but blood is a connective tissue, as is bone. A loose connective tissue is like cartilage, uh, tendons, things like that connect bones to bones and muscles to bones. So cardiac muscle in the heart is involuntary. It beats without us telling it to. Skeletal muscle, involuntary muscle, I have to run a flexible arm, I have to manually do it. 
smooth muscle in the intestinal wall. So the reason that food goes down is because of this peristaltic action. Peristaltic action. That pushes the food down and it's just to break it down. Again, it's a vol involuntary muscle, as is cardiac muscle. So skeletal muscle, it's like that. Smooth muscle, it's like that. Cardiac muscle is like that, and that is because it contracts. You can see that there's little filaments here that hold them together, allow them to, to beat. To, not just to contract, but to relax in a uniform motion. So epithelial tissue. It's typically one cell thick and allows for the passage of uh, nutrients in the stomach. It be a, a classic example of a, of a, a stratified, it's a cuboidal epithelium, but they're all much the same. Again, nerve tissue, the nerve carries the electrical impulse into the nerve body and out to the dendrites. Connective tissue, again, fibrous connective tissue. And adipose tissue fat is also uh, connected to so cartilage that's on the end of the bones. The loose connective tissue, which is underneath the skin, the fibrous connecting tissue, which is uh, the tendon, which connects a muscle to the bone. And if you look, they all look roughly the same. So the, if you look at a, a cell, what it looks like, and what it looks like it does is generally what it does to form, you know, matches the function. So systems. I just completely skip over the organs. Okay, sorry. Uh, it's just had a bit of a meltdown there. So now we look to the organs. So the heart, the brain, the liver, the large and small intestines, kidneys, the lungs. So the organs are made up of different tissue types. These tissue types, uh, they work together to perform a specific function, which is make the organ work. So the lungs are a part of the respiratory system. And this is the site at which gas exchange occurs. So if we were to jump onto the whiteboard for a second, this gas exchange is a uh, dead. Another one. Gas exchange can go over this in more detail later on. Gas exchange is exchange of O2 and CO2. So O2 enters, the, enters circulation in the lungs, goes into, we're looking at this slide here, the alveoli, goes into the lungs, through into the blood, through inside into the brain looking thing and into the capillaries. The CO2 comes from the tissues into the blood and goes the opposite way and then we breathe it out. There's this big misconception that more O2 is better. The more you're breathing in, the more you breathe, the more CO2 you produce. There has to be, there's a ratio and I can't remember what it is, but you can't just have lots of O2 and not be getting rid of any CO2. If you have a buildup of CO2 in the blood, you get something called metabolic acidosis. 
not very nice to have. Uh, and I'll go through uh, how the different systems and organs are affected at the end when I look at asthma and maybe diabetes, depending on how we go with it. So the heart, looking at the side 22, helps to pump blood around the body, pumps oxygenated blood away from the heart, pumps deoxygenated blood back, sorry, from the body, that should be, not to the body. And it's probably the most important. And if there's two systems, sorry, I'm dropping it ahead. There's two organs that work synergistically, it's the heart and the lungs. And I'll go through that at the end. So there are 11 systems in the body. I'm not gonna list them all, because I always forget one or two. And we're gonna look at five or six, and then we're gonna look at two cases, so diabetes and asthma, where one system very, very quickly affects another. And when the systems start to go down, I'm sure you've all heard the term multi-system organ failure. When one starts to fail, everything else follows quickly. So the cardiovascular system, it's often referred to as cardiovascular system as the uh, just leave it at cardiovascular. So it pumps the blood around the body, it carries the oxygenated blood away from the heart to the tissues, and it carries the deoxygenated blood that's filled with CO2 back to the lungs. It also carries the waste products to the kidneys and the livers for detoxification and filtration. It carries chemical signals of hormones. And we'll look at hormones when we look at diabetes. Around the body. And it allows the immune system partly to attack anywhere in the body. We have uh, in, the, in the immune system, we have the lymphatic system, which is under the skin and carry, it goes a different system to the cardiovascular, but allow uh, the immune system also uses that system. So if you get sick under your arms and your groin, you've got um, You've got these sort of little immune, uh, uh, what's the word? Well, I can't remember probably because it's not a fucking up. Um, anyway, they get inflamed and swollen. That's part of the lymphatic system. So, you can see on the little picture, you've got lungs on the side. They're not really part of the cardiovascular system but it's just the heart, the veins, the arteries, the capillaries. So the respiratory system, we inhale O2, enters the blood supply and binds to hemoglobin. Hemoglobin carries four molecules or moles of oxygen and carries that around the body. Uh, again, we'll go into the respiratory system and partial pressures and things like that later on. And then we breathe out CO2. So the cardiovascular system can't really function without the respiratory system. There is a link here. If someone stops breathing, then their heart very quickly stops beating. Someone's heart stops beating, they very quickly stop breathing. So someone has a heart attack and their heart's not beating, probably not beating at all. The first thing we do is start giving them CPR and we give them rescue breath. Because we know that if we start pumping all, the, we can pump all the blood around the body, if the person stops breathing, then we might as well just be pumping water around their system. system made up of the lungs, diaphragm. Diaphragm 
uh, sits in, I don't know if you can see, sits in the back of your thoracic cavity. And what it does is it, it basically keeps everything pressurized so that when you're breathing in, you're using energy, but breathing out is just a recoil. You don't have to actively breathe out. And that lowers the amount of energy that we require each day. So the urinogenital system or the genitourinary system filters wastes and balances electrolytes. So it balances out the water in our system and produces, stores, and eliminates urine. So the organs are the kidneys, ureter, urethra, so on and so forth. Again, we go more into detail than that. So digestive system, uh, it's now more known as the gastrointestinal system. And its purpose is to break down food for elimination and extracting the nutrients to feed the rest of the body. It's a really complicated one. The mouth, salivary glands, esophagus, the liver, the gallbladder, stomach, pancreas, large intestine, small intestine, and all of it's down the bottom, the rectum. So integumentary is the skin. Now, we like to think of ourselves as pretty advanced beings, but we need something on our outside to protect us from everything. So it plays a role in immunity. On our skin, there's oils. Your skin is naturally oily. That protect us from the growth of certain bacteria and mold and virus and fungi from living on our skin it controls the pH. Uh, it protects us. So if you touch wood, never happens to get a serious burn, you would have to um, sometimes have a skin graft because once all that skin is gone, there's nothing protecting the nerves and all the vascular tissue underneath from the elements. Something that most people don't know, we don't, we get our vitamin D partly from the sun. There's a cholesterol in your skin that is only activated by photons of light traveling into it. It then travels to the kidneys and the kidneys produce vitamin D. So we don't get vitamin D from the sun, it sort of catalyzes the reaction that we need together. So, on slide 31. And I think I will do asthma here, and then I'm going to do a video, hopefully on diabetes, so I don't collapse in here. So, asthma, is a disease of the immune system as well as the respiratory system, but it affects all of the systems. So we start with an immune overreaction. So people that have asthma, can be triggered by something as little as cold weather. We triggered by dust. So the immune system overreacts to something that we breathe in. Then, unfortunately for people with asthma, the following happens: we get hypersecretion of mucus. We get thickening of membranes. And we get constriction of the bronchioles.
Now, uh, unfortunately, this happens very quickly. And the person with asthma begins to panic. So, this causes the characteristic crackling sound as the air passes over the trapped air. So the mucus physically traps stale air that doesn't have any oxygen into the lungs. So the person immediately starts trying to breathe out. They try trying to get all that air out. So they have altered breathing. Start to hyperventilate. They, what they do is they increase their respiratory rate. So now we have the immune system why my brain is from the immune system and the respiratory system. This increase in respiratory rate causes increase in heart rate or what we call tachycardia. So now what system have we got? We've got the cardiovascular system. So this causes an increase in CO2, which causes an increase in HCO3, which causes a decrease in the pH of the blood. So now the kidneys are involved. So the kidneys madly start trying to reverse this. So the heart rate goes up, respiratory rate goes up, blood pressure goes down. Blood pressure goes down. So the brain tells the kidneys to flood the blood with water. To try and bring that back up. So you increase the volume. So blood pressure drops, person becomes dizzy. Now the central nervous system comes into play. So all the while this immune overreaction, so this causes a dropping in oxygen saturation and someone 30 seconds ago who was okay is now in a lot of trouble to get dizzy this causes dry mouth so now we have the digestive system involved the brain's now screaming out for uh, restoration of homeostasis. So what is homeostasis? A state of happiness. So every disease state is a change from 
alteration of homeostasis. Now, this massive overreaction by the body is simply trying to maintain homeostasis. So it ramps up the respiratory rate, which drops the pH of the blood, which causes the kidneys to go mad. The increase in the heart rate drops the blood pressure. Brain tells the kidneys to increase the amount of water in the blood, so it pulls the blood from uh, the water from everywhere else. The person gets dizzy. And in order to fix this, in order to, if this is left unchecked, Unfortunately, the person will probably die. But we then use Ventolin which kills, stops the immune overreaction and within very quickly a person with very severe asthma can go from needing an immediate hospitalization and all of this is caused by the body trying to go back to its normal state. And instead of stopping and thinking, it panics and tries to fix everything. So, thank you for watching this one. Uh, I'll, I'll get back next Saturday, maybe Sunday. So I'll put up the recording of next week's, next weekend, and this one can go up today. So thank you all for watching again and I'll see you after the holidays.